Hi friends, once again I welcome to all into my YouTube channel Literature Insights. So if you have not subscribed my YouTube channel Literature Insights yet, so please subscribe it by pressing the bell icon button on your screen for getting further notification of my videos. In my last tutorial, I explained the lyric as a form of poetry in English literature. The lyric is a short poem which deals with single emotions and feelings with the help of musical instrument known as a lyre so it creates a musical effect on the mind of readers so now in this tutorial i am going to explain another major forms of poetry in english literature the ode so now in this tutorial i am going to explain you some major points of ode such as origin of the ode features of the ode structure of the ode and types of the ode so these are the topics or issues covered under the topic of ode so now let's see the first point origin of the ode so now here an ode is a short lyric poem that praises an individual an idea or an event so in ancient greece odes were accompaniment by music so in ancient greece odes were performed or sung by the accompaniment of music and dance so now here the word ode comes from the Greek word adin which means to sing or to chant. The Latin poet Pindar was invented the ode so here is the sole credit goes to the Pindar for the invention of ode as a poetic form in English literature. Odes are often ceremonial and formal in tone. It is written to celebrate a public event or occasion and it always deals with high and serious theme in a dignified manner. It is addressed to an object or a state of mind. Ode has its own significance in English literature. So now we have seen the ode is originated in Greek and Rome. Later on it is flourished or influenced by the English poets in English literature during the 17th, 18th and it reached its peak during the 19th century under the hands of great romantic poets like John Keats. So now here John Keats was the greatest romantic poets of old in English literature. So now here the next point features of old. So now see here are some of the prominent features of old. Now see like lyric the old is originated from a Greek literature. The etymology of both forms old and lyric having the same existence. The subject of the ode is a serious and dignified. The ode always deals with serious and dignified subject. The ode is written in a rhyme. It is longer than the lyric. The ode is in a form of an address to some person, something or some place. The ode is an exalted in subject matter and the style of treatment is equally elevated. The theme and its treatment are never trivial or undignified. In ode, the poet is serious in the choice of his subject and manner of its presentation. So now here are the both things are important. The choice of the subject must be serious and its manner of presentation must be in a dignified manner. The lyric is an expression of single feelings or emotion whereas the ode is a development of that particular emotion or feeling. So to be continued with the same features of ode. So now see here the lyric is an unpremeditated art. So now here the lyric is an unplanned art. It is not planned before its composition. But the ode is vice versa. Here poet thinks a lot and meditates it and plan before its composition. The ode is addressed to its subject matter and the opening lines are in the form of an apostrophe. The tone of address is maintained throughout the poem. So whenever we read a ode, so we, there are a number of odes in a literature. Just we have seen there is a P.B. Shellers ode, Kitts ode, S.T. Coleridge ode, William Wordsworth ode. So in that ode we have find that there are the tone of poet is addressed to some object, something or an individual or the state of mind. So now here let's see for example how does the poet address the particular object through his 
poem. So now here is the first example of Shele. Shele's O to the West Wind begins with the apostrophe O Wild West Wind. So now in this line, Shele addresses directly to the Wild West Wind. Then second example, John Kitts Ode on a Gracian Urn. So this poem begins with Thou still unravished bride of quietness. So now here the John Kitts directly address to the newly bride. So this is the one of the most prominent features of Ode in English literature because it is always written in the form of an address to someone. So then here the structure of the Ode, so it is very prominent. So there are three sections or stanzas of the Ode which are very important for the structure of Ode. The strophe, the anti-strophe and the epoot. So now let's see the first, the strophe. In a Greek Ode, the strophe usually consists of two or more lines repeated as a unit. In modern usage, the term strophe can refer to any group of verses that form a distinct unit within a poem. Then the anti-strophe, the second section or a stanza of an ode is structured in the same way as we find in a strophe, but it typically offers a thematic counterbalance. Then last, the epode, the third section or a stanza of ode typically has a distinct meter and length from the strophe and anti-strophe. It serves to conclude the ideas of the ode. So now the third section or a stanza is a different from earlier two stanzas or section of ode that is strophe and anti-strophe. So now here let's see the next point types of ode. So here are the three main prominent types of odes as follows Pindaric ode, then Horatian ode, Irregular ode. So these are the most significant types of ode in English literature. So let's see one by one. So now here the first ode is Pindaric ode. So as we know from the title or the name of this type of ode, we can easily understand this ode is invented by Pindar. So now here Pindaric ode was invented by the Greek poet Pindar known as a Pindaric ode. The Pindaric ode was a choric song sung to the accompaniment of a dance. So now in this ode, there is a group of people come together for the musical effect with the help of music as well as dance. The structure of the Pindaric ode was as per the moments of the dancers divided into three stanzas or sections. So it has a three parts known as the strophe, anti-strophe and the epode. So now see here are the moments of the three section or stanzas of the ode. Now during the strobe, dancers move from the right to the left. In anti-strobe, the dancer makes a reverse action of strobe and moves from the left to the right. In epode, the dancer stands static or still without any movement. So here we can also see the epode is different from structure to the earlier stanzas or a section of Pindaric ode such as strophe and anti-strophe. Then there is a second type of ode is Horatian ode. It is also easy to know all of you by its title or name. Horatian ode was invented by the Rome poet Horace. So now here Horatian ode was named after the Roman poet Horace. The Horatian ode is a simpler than the Pindaric ode and therefore it is easier than the Pindaric ode. So it is very simpler in theme and matter. So it will be easily understood by the learners of English literature. The Horatian ode is written in a two lines or a four lines stanzas that share the same meter, rhyme scheme and length. So now it is written in couplet and quatrain sharing the same meter, rhyme scheme and length. Unlike the more formal Pindaric ode, the Horatian ode traditionally explores an intimate scenes of daily life. So in Horatian ode, we can find it is a different from the Pindaric ode. It deals with quotidian life and scenes of human beings. 
then third ore that is a very recent type of ore that is irregular ore irregular ore was introduced in 1656 by abraham cowley known as a cowlian ore irregular ore is a different from the pindaric and horician ore so it is free from all restrictions and constraint as we have seen in earlier two ores pindaric and horician ore it does not follow the structure pattern of pindaric and horician ore it includes rhyme as well as irregular verse structure and stanza patterns so now here we can find it includes rhyme as well as it is a free form verse structure and stanza patterns here are some of the best examples of three types of ode poems as follows so now here first the first known odes written in english literature were the epithelium and prothelium by the edmund spencer so now here the credit goes to the edmund spencer for the writing odes in a first in english literature then pindaric ode so here are some of the examples of pindaric ode victory ode by pindar ode on limitations of immortality by william wordsworth the progress of poesy by thomas gray so these are the significant odes in english literature second type is horician ode so it is very developed or very popular during the romantic period of literature so now here are some of the best examples of horician ode such as ode to autumn ode to nightingale by john keats ode on a solitude by alexander pope so now this form is developed and flourished in the hands of john keats in a romantic period then last type is irregular ode ode to the confederate dead by allen tett and ode to the west wind by p b shelley ode on a grecian urn by john keats so these are the famous examples of irregular ode in english literature so here are some of the very well known examples or uh, odes in english literature written by the well known poet if you like my videos please press the bell icon button for subscribe my channel like and share my videos by pressing the bell icon button thank you for watching my videos see you again in my next video very soon so stay safe stay home